Good day everyone, my name is Kaden Mazzokere. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks um, and welcome to today's lesson in which we are going to talk about the kinked demand curve. Right, without wasting time, quickly, uh, an oligopoly is a business that um, is in an industry that has only a few firms in it. A good example is MTN, um, which competes with Celsi, Vodacom and MTN. Uh, and telcom uh, there are only four uh, in south africa and as big as south africa we only have four firms so that tells you that yes uh, there are only a few firms um, in that particular industry unlike the maize industry for example where there are thousands or hundreds of thousands of maize farmers in the entire country and and maize itself is a homogeneous product Right, so that's what an oligopoly is. So now an oligopoly has a kink demand curve. So we want to look at a kink demand curve to see how it looks like and why probably it looks the way it does. Right, to jump into it, um, to get started, uh, you see we have a table there. And in our table, I have different colors and I did that uh for you to see something or to explain for my explaining to be clearer for you right the first thing you see is that we have numbers going down the highest being 22 rands the lowest being two rands and then we have our quantity having one to eight so we have eight units and we have 22 rand as the um, the highest value so now uh one rand corresponds with 22 rands so what it means here basically is according to this table, if you can read um, tables uh, correctly, it's that uh, the output one corresponds with 22 rand. So what it means is if this particular business, if this was MTN and it produces one, whatever it is that they produce, they would uh, be able to sell it for 22 rands. And if they would produce two, according to the law of demand as output increases price decreases so you'll see that at uh, at the second quantity they can sell at 20 rands and as output increases the third quantity they sell it for what 18 rands as you see there so now uh, up to this point i think you can see something we have a demand curve that's obviously downward sloping but we haven't really uh, you know, we, 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 I, I can say we don't really know how elastic this demand curve is. Uh, we, we just know it's not perfectly inelastic. It's not perfectly elastic because surely this thing is downward sloping. So if it was perfectly elastic, it would be horizontal. If it was perfectly in, in, inelastic, it would be vertical. So in this case, it's downward sloping. So we don't know whether it's inelastic or elastic. We will know after we make some calculations so at the point at this point in time it's a downward sloping demand curve okay now if we continue and and you see that each time one unit uh, each time we increase by one unit the, the the amount drops by two rands okay let's see at the lower price now we increased a unit from four no no from five to six and as we did that, our price dropped by four instead of dropping by two. So now our price is dropping faster than the rate at which it was dropping earlier. Okay, you see, two, uh, an increase by one rent, by, by one unit, uh, drops the price by four. So at this point or at this lower price from uh, say 14 going down, uh, price is decreasing faster than the rate at which quantity is increasing uh, and and obviously it works also uh, the opposite direction like when uh, if the price goes down quantity increases or if the price goes up quantity decreases but now how responsive is quantity demanded is basically what elasticity is if if there is no response completely, we say it's perfectly inelastic. If the response is to infinite, like in case of a perfect competitor, we say uh, it is perfectly elastic. And uh, in this case, let's find out 
how elastic these demand curves are. Now I'm saying these demand curves because clearly we, we cannot say we have one demand curve here. Well, we have two, but when we put them, those two together, then we call it a kinked demand curve, if we call it one. But basically a kinked demand curve is made up of two curves. Uh, one which is elastic and one which is in inelastic. So we join those two those two demand curves together Then we have a kink demand curve and we can clearly see the point where the demand curve kinks you uh, I'll show you just now right when we join the other points and uh, we have another demand curve So the first one is in red the other one is in blue sky blue so Let's try to see how elastic each demand curve is. Do you think the top one is more elastic than the lower one? What do you think? But uh, I think uh, if you understand what elasticity really is, uh, you can tell which one is more elastic than the other. Right. Now, we all know the formula for calculating um, elasticity. It's percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price. So that's what we are going to try and find out. So at a higher price, say of 18, if the price is high, 18, because according to our table here, a low price would be two, uh, the highest price is 22. So 18 is part of, we can call it at a high price. So at a high price of say 18 rands, if the price would be increased by this particular firm from 20 to 18, how responsive would quantity demanded be? Now, how responsive it is tells us how elastic that particular demand curve is. So if it, if it responds more, we say it's highly elastic. If it responds less, we say it is uh, maybe relatively inelastic or inelastic. But take note, I'm not saying perfectly because those are the two extreme cases. We can do something like this this is perfectly inelastic this is perfectly elastic then we have other degrees in between where we have one in the middle which we normally call unitary inel uh, elasticity or unitary elasticity now in this case uh let's do the calculation so if the price would go up from 18 rands to 20 rands that would be how much 11 percent increase okay you can calculate to see if i'm right then uh, if the quantity demanded, oh, then that increase in what? In price would cause a response or would change quantity demanded uh, according to the rule of uh, the, the demand uh, rule. Uh, it would cause demand to drop by 33%. Okay. Now using our formula, percentage change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in price, it will be 33 divided by 11. Therefore, okay, which will give us, um, a sh you know, but it will give us um, an answer which is greater than one. 11 goes into 33 three times. So it will give us three. I hope I'm not lying. It will give us three, positive three. Now, our answer is definitely greater than one, which means it is elastic. Okay, moving on to the next one. If we look at the lower demand curve, price would change at a lower price, meaning uh, a price that's relatively low, like those blue, uh, uh, what, those blue prices. Now, price, if it changes from six to 10, which is what, six, four rand increase, if they increase from six to 10, here I, I, I'm increasing it, yes, by four, uh, there I did it by two, but the main thing I was looking at, I wanted uh, uh, quantity to change by one unit. That's why I did it like that. So in this case, if price would go up from six rand to four rand, it doesn't really matter how much I make it go up. Uh, what matters is how, at what percent did it go up, then we compare that we use the formula percentage change so you can even increase it by two rands if you want but then that the quantity would decrease by half so instead of you saying quantity changes from seven to six you would say it changes from seven to six comma five then still you can work it out you can calculate to see the percentage change it, it won't give you a different answer 
uh, it will tell you the same thing, uh, whether it's elastic or inelastic. And it being inelastic, the answer you get should be less than one. Basically, that's what it means. All right, so in this case, percentage change. Now, if uh, price changes by uh, from 6 to 10, that will be 67% change. It will cause quantity demanded to, draw, to, to decrease by 14. So that tells you this is relatively inelastic because the, the percentage change in quantity demanded is very small. So a change in price does not do much in as far as uh, quantity demanded is concerned. So we say that particular demand curve is relatively inelastic, like its response is small, its response is tiny. Right, with that said, uh, let's find out now uh, our, like, if you were MTN, if you were C, if you were Telcom, so how much would you sell your product? Well, you, you have to sell your product at a price where you can make the most total revenue so basically with uh with perfect monopoly monopolistic we apply that rule of profit maximization where a firm should sell a product at a point where mc intersects mr it's a bit different in as far as an oligopoly is concerned because the oligopoly will have to uh, um, apply sort of a different rule because its demand curve is not the same as other uh, market structures. Its demand curve is kinked. It has two demand curves that differ in elasticity. So it cannot really apply the same profit maximizing rule. However, um, <coughs> it uses something a bit different where, where we say the best price for the oligopoly is where its demand curve kinks. At the kink, that's the best price. So here the demand curves kink or they meet at 14 rands, which is 5 units. <coughs> we want to see, if we calculate, we want to see if that is the best price for this particular firm. So for us to find out, what I did is, I said price times quantity, I got total revenue for each of the eight uh, outputs. So we start with one, so one times 22, that gives us 22, 40, 56, 64. So at this point in time, we see that quantity number six is better than any other quantity. Let's look at the other ones. <coughs> Sorry, I have flu, but I cannot stop making content, making videos for you because you guys when you are about to write you, this and that so I, I cannot wait for my flu i have to do this but if we look at a lower price we have 60 we have 42 we have 16. 64 is still the highest now let's now compare all these outputs with five units so five units according to me would be the best let's find out how many yes it is 14 times 5 it gives you 70. in this case the best price for mtn is 14. if mtn tries to if mtn increases its price to 16 in order for them to make more money the problem is they won't because their total revenue will decline if mtn lowers their price to 10 in an attempt to lure customers to them Yes, it's going to work, but not really. Yes, they'll get more subscribers, um, more people using their network, but because of their price, they won't be able to maximize their total revenue. Their total revenue is maximized at five units because that's where its demand curve kinks. There is no better price. Change these numbers if you want. Put numbers that go up, uh, what? At the same rate if you want instead of one say 5 10 15 20 if you don't want five do it in 20s 20 40 60 80 and change price the way you want if you want say 20 40 60 anyhow and then each time calculate you'll see that there is no better price than there where the demand curve kings if you want you can try that out all right so this is a cleaner graph one without so many you know outputs and so on you can also calculate here 
have a look say 10 times 150 you will see that it's better than any other quantity any other combination here well if you don't understand uh there is a comment section down below i urge you to go there and tell us what you think is not clear in this video and then i'll try to resolve uh, whatever question it is that you may have all right as always thank you so much um subscribe hit the notification bell in order for you to get notified every time we post thank you so much god bless